So what's the first thing that comes to mind when you hear the word witch? If it's a negative, then we're going to change that. This is about the positive aspect of being a witch. The rainbow witch, using your magic for good. With my guest, Kat Young. We are just connecting with those energies and bringing them back to ourselves to make our lives better because we have the power. Kat Young, I've lost count of how many books you've done with crystals, with energy healing. I love the cheese dome. Okay. But there's so much information in this latest book. If you're wanting to work on manifesting and colors are, are something you've considered, but maybe not gone really wholeheartedly into, this book will give you an idea of how you can incorporate that in your life to improve your situation, maybe with relationships, with, with just your own attitude. The Rainbow Witch, Enhance Your Magic with the Secret Powers of Color. And Kak Young, it's all yours. Take the floor. <laughs> Thank you, Wendy. First of all, thank you for having me back. Um, I want to get over the term witch because a lot of people say, oh my, I'm not into witchcraft and isn't that negative and da da da. Well, I have a whole other book I can write on that. But I want to say what it stands for here, which spelled out is wise, intuitive teacher creating happiness. And if you are a rainbow witch, what we do is greet each other with the, with the phrase liati, which means love is all there is. And the response to that is jiwad, good is all we do. So we say liati, jiwad, liati, jiwad. And what we're spreading is the essence of what this energetic work is all about. And that is there's no negativity. There's no hexes or curses or anything of that nature. This is all about positive growth and Taking the colors that are in the universe there for us as demonstrated in the, in the rainbow and bringing those into our bodies and souls where we can use those wavelengths, those vibrations to grow and to heal ourselves and others. A lot of this also involves rituals. You establish a routine and then in one instance, just mentioning something that's involving a wand as you, you have a certain spell or certain um, manifestation you're working with. And, but it's a ritual that you repeat in order to help energize whatever it is you're hoping to create. Does that make sense? Am I, am I putting that out right? Yeah, that's right. That's right. And what we humans have done throughout the ages is create rituals for ourselves to uh, handle the energy that's already installed. See, some of us know that we already have this installed package of inner power and personal awareness, and some of us don't. So if you have a ritual, perhaps that's going to waken up those energies that are already there. Um, none of this is strange. None of this is weird. It's all there and present. It may be new to some people, but Working a ritual makes you aware of your enormous power within because we are clay in our own hands and we can take part in the act of co-creation and making our lives into what we want it to be, just like we shape clay. Nothing in our lives happens without our participation. So when we think about that, we create the negative aspects as well as the positive. Energy flows where our attention goes, where we put it. So with these rituals, we make sure that our energy is going in the direction that we want it to so that we can manifest the things that we desire. So if you use, choose to use a wand, and I talk about different kinds of tools in the Rainbow Witch that we can use to uh, help us find out the secrets hidden inside of ourselves. There is no outside power that is telling us all this. It's all inside. All we have to do is tap into it and listen. So all the techniques are there for us to use, whether they're the runes, the OWAM, the, the wands, uh, any of the practices, any of the rituals that we talk about with magical birds. We're simply using the energy that the rainbow has, which is it constructs the transmission of wavelengths from heaven to earth, from our lane where we're in, our vibrational lane, into the lane of the unseen, which is a different vibration. That's all it is. We are just connecting with those energies and bringing them back to ourselves to make our lives better because we have the power. 
The colors that you have chosen, the red ray, orange ray, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. Can we just go with the indigo ray and give me an example? Well, sure. Now, first of all, let's talk about the fact that these rays are all related to the chakras. So if anybody doesn't know about the chakras, um, those are seven centers, little wheels of light that start at the bottom of our spine and go up through our uh uh, up through our body into the last one is violet and indigo is the third eye. It's, it represents the pineal gland, the one where we have the ability to connect at other levels with other things. Looking at how that chakra progresses, how that chakra healing progresses, we're kind of starting with the sixth one. And it is a dark color that is revealed by ancient civilizations, really, uh, to be associated with spiritual associations. It's called the Anja. In Egypt, they used uh, the the symbol of the Eye of Horus to reflect the location of this pineal gland in the human brain. And any time you have a psychic involved or you have uh, someone who's giving some readings, like Edgar Cayce, for example, was famous for using his pineal gland to get information for people about their health and their bodies and their lives. So we call on this energy, we call on the energy of this indigo ray uh, to help us wake up our own consciousness so that we understand that we are not, uh, the sun is not revolving around us, but we are part of a larger cosmos. And we begin to connect with and interact with the energy that is around us and beyond us, even if we have those proclivities or sensitivities. So this color is represented by an archetype, which is the caregiver. In astrology, the indigo ray is Jupiter and Saturn. There are flower essences, the Bach flower remedy system for assisting with certain blockages or certain parts of our anatomy that need to be freed up in order to support this, the transmission of the indigo ray in its purest form. There are indigo ray crystals such as kyanite, fluorite, uh, indigo, sodalite, labradorite, lapis lazulite, tanzanite, sodalite. There are various different dark, dark crystals. Uh, dark blue bordering on purple. It's, it's like the darkest color of amethyst is your indio color. And the symbols of them, again, we, we go back to the Eye of Horus or even Lord Shiva. I love the Greek mati, the evil eye, because sometimes you can use that as the eye into the soul of another person. And it's not just warding off evil. I mean, that's an old wives' tale. But what, what you really want to do is look at the depth of that symbol, that evil eye and say no it's not evil at all it's the eye of insight and it brings your focus and concentration into the middle of that symbol where you want to be able to give your own psychic ability to that level and want to be joined at that level by another entity or force that can bring you wisdom and help there are also indigo ray essential oils such as lavender, sandalwood, frankincense, clary sage, and bergamot. You can get the uh, pineal gland assisted with herbs such as reishi, passion flower, milk thistle, ginkgo, and and a whole lot of other things that I have listed here too in the book. I don't want to give it all away in one, one sentence. But also the Feng Shui also represents uh, itself in the indigo ray as water and the nighttime sky, which symbolizes our connection to the cosmos and also our journey into greater depths of ourself. That's the water element, go into the emotions and the subconscious. And we uh, access this by using a tool called pranic breathing. That's one of the tools. So you really do allow yourself to sink down into a theta delta state where you can be open to all of the information that is coming to you from the levels beyond when you quiet that still part within you and allow it to open to other information 
it will change the way you relate to not only your own life, but your world. Well, you've used a lot of other tools as well. Like there, in, in addition to when, the one you just mentioned, you're incorporating the birds into this. You're incorporating astrology. You're incorporating runes, also tarot and automatic writing. And so for anyone who's already intuitive and using some of these tools, then you've also given a recipe basically for each of these rays and how it applies and how each of these elements is incorporated to be able to give yourself a better awareness or insight into your current situation. That is correct. That is correct. And what the book is about is a taking the time out of your life, no matter how advanced or how beginning you are, is to start with the red ray, the place where our beliefs are in our chakra system. This is where we are born. This is our family. This is our tribal roots. This is what we come into the world with and is reinforced until we are, you know, 10, 11, 12 and start to maybe be able to differentiate for ourselves the world around us and the meaning thereof. Well, now, how do we go about changing that? If we don't like what we believe, or if we think that it is outmoded or doesn't apply to us, then how do we begin to change that? And this is the way to do that. We we start with the red way, red ray. Yeah. We move to the orange, to the yellow, to the green, to the blue, to the indigo, and to the violet. And by the time someone has taken the time to go through the rituals and to go through the processes that I take them through, the initiations, if you will, by the time you reach your violet seventh chakra, your top ray, you have purified your body and you have purified your soul and you've gotten to know yourself better. Now you just don't sit down and read this on a plane. This is something that you do and incorporate into your life. I would say it will take you anywhere between three and six months to go through all of the processes, no matter how advanced you are. And I took myself through all of these and I've had 30, 40 years in this uh, metaphysical area. So when I did them myself, that's where I found the value. And I paired these up with tools that really can help you. For example, the pendulum is paired with the red ray because that is our innermost hidden uh, tool to get down into what we really, really believe. Certainly if we were uh, raised in a particularly religious environment, then maybe we want to change and see the world differently through different eyes. That's the root that we would work with in order to loosen all that that may be hardened into cement and crack it open so that the light can get in. When this process is completed, you're not only going to feel better, but you're going to uh, navigate your life through this world better and the life beyond. You're going to prepare yourself for your next life as well. And all the tools uh, I teach uh, just reintroduce some things that have been used for centuries and centuries. None of this is drive-through. This is all about people perfecting these skills for years and centuries and now it's handed to you on a platter in the book, The Rainbow Witch. One instance where, I mean, you've traveled a lot and you've learned with a lot of shamanic teachers. And there's one that you mentioned, a Hawaiian teacher, Serge King. And I'm yeah, thinking... Yeah, Serge Kahili King. Yes, yes. Yeah. So you said, this is this is taken from something I learned from him. And that, you know, there's there's so much in here that incorporates multiple very, you know, decades, centuries of, of thought that I think it, it adds value because it's, uh, some of it is, is easy. It's already in our lexicon. It's already out there and we might be familiar with it without even knowing that. So it makes it easy to translate that to, oh, this is how this works. There's one in here, a banishment ritual, which I, okay, there we go. <laughs> It's kind of like Harry Potter. Uh, you take your wand and you, and you do this and, you know, and so I thought, okay, well, I like that one just because of the name. So who do I want to get rid of? Is that, no, maybe that's not a good idea. Well, who or what? Who or what? Yeah, okay. exactly. Who or what? Now, you know, we're not doing this from a negative point of view, but we're, what we're doing is releasing that thing or person's control over us okay. so that we are banishing the control that it has over our mindset, our belief system, or even maybe even our environment. I mean, you may have to move out, but that's okay. <laughs> uh, what, 
once you decide you want to do that. And I, I think uh, you really hit something on, on the head there a minute ago, and that is in the book I talk about everything I've learned, and I've spent 40 years learning from shamans all over the world, and I just simply want to share. And I put it into this format because it really is familiar to a lot of people. The chakras are familiar to some people. Colors are familiar to others. But I put all the information into to these brackets so that I could share what they taught me. I was very fortunate and, and very blessed in my life to work with these extraordinary people. And I just don't want it to end with, with me. I want it to be able to live on in the in this book and in the minds and hearts of the people who pick it up, do it, and become rainbow witches. The rituals that you talk about, breathing, I mean, that's, that's like basic. And it's so uh, innocuous that we take it for granted. But when you do a breathing routine, you change the way your heart is flowing, your mind, your body, everything responds. That sets the tone for the rest of whatever, you know, whatever ray you're working with. But I thought that was really a nice way to just kind of get someone grounded and present in the moment was to start with the breath. Once again, you're so right because we are so busy, busy, busy in our life, going here, going there. And what we need to do is to slow down for a minute and and tap into the wisdom, this deep well of wisdom we all have within our souls and to listen to that for a while. It, you are never going to be satisfied with what you have bought, the show you've seen, the car you drive. That is not who you are as a person. What, who you are is what's here in the book about starting with the breath and then moving into the colors of who you are inside and bringing those forward in expression. You know, magic itself is egoless. We just simply rely on the installed power that we all have from the factory. We focus that, we give it direction, and then we activate it. That's all we do with this book and in the process of of our lives. And I wanted to make it fun and interesting and uh, exciting because when you reveal to yourself something new and something wonderful, it's like a party. You can have parties for yourself. You know, in, in the yellow ray, I ask people to dress in yellow and spend a day out in the world. Now, you're going to get looks. You're going to get all kinds of different things, but it's fun. I have, um, I just had a couple of friends say, oh my gosh, you know, I'm going to try that. And they did it. And they came back all giggling and said, you know, I had so much fun when I dressed in yellow. A lot of people said, oh, you've just brightened my day. Just little things like that make enormous changes. Well, and not only that, it, it feels, you know, you feel it too. You just put that out and you're reflecting it back. You're seeing the result. And so it's a two way street. It's like, it, it's, um, yeah. it's energizing. It's invigorating. It's, it's vibrant. There's other stuff that you do in here too, when you're talking about different um, routines and different rituals. And I like the fact that th- there's one that you describe where you go into the water and this is a releasing ceremony basically. And, and there's a ritual that goes along with that. How did you come up with for each of these rays, the unique, like you said earlier, that you decided that this was going to be a basic one at the very beginning. And so you started with, um, at the first one, what did I do? Did I blank on that one already? Of course, because there's so many rituals to keep up with. The tools that you chose were specific to each ray. How did you come up with that? Well, I I put them all together. I had this giant spreadsheet on uh. on my dining room table, and I had all these cards, and I lined them up, and I said, no, 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 that goes with that, that one. So when I did the Sea Witch Purification Ritual, it is from a Hawaii Y powerful ritual in Native Hawaiian culture, which uh, the Native Hawaiians, the, the, the Hunas back in the day, used it for healing and purifying anything that may be blocking you. So you you do an entire ritual involving the body of water. Well, of course, that's going to go, go into the blue ray, isn't it? Because that's, that's the color of water, and that's what we want to do with ourselves in purification. We Water is, is part of everybody's purification ritual. I don't care what religion you are, but that that is how that applied. So that kind of automatically fit into there. And then, like I said, the pendulum ritual became part of the red ray because that uh, corresponds to the first chakra. 
that's where all of our beliefs are stored, and we want to shake those babies up if we want change. There's one that involves a dragon, the Celtic dragon, and I had this, you know, you're the dragon, and I have dragon cards, and when I was reading that and thinking, well, isn't it interesting you, in, you included dragon? I had just acquired a book on spirits, and so I opened that book as I'm re- I'm kind of multitasking as I'm reading, and I opened right up to working with the dragon. I thought, okay, let's bring up the dragon. That's a powerful tool and symbol. It is. And the Celtic dragon is very interesting because the Celtic dragon is different from the Chinese dragon, for example. And the Celtic dragon, its breath is orange. It comes out with an orange. It's not fire. It's an orange. So there's passion and there's emotion involved. And I've been told by some Celtic historic and historians that the Celtic dragon's breath smells of citrus and oranges and kumquats. So, of course, the Celtic <laughs> dragon had to be in the orange color. I like that a lot better than fire. Okay, that's a, that's, <laughs> that's a nice upgrade. Yeah, it's a good upgrade, isn't it? <laughs> and it's the little things you find out when you read, you know, thousands of books and you underline those. So, yes. So the 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 whole process of making these decisions was kind of like, you know, who you keep and who do you throw out? It wasn't Sophie's choice in any way, but it was certainly uh, fun mingling them around. And then I would, I would sit with them and I would meditate and I would say, is that feeling right? Is this congruent? And then when I got all the uh, uh, confirmations back internally, I then began to assemble it, but it was quite the process the magic in your life. Can you share some of that as well? Because what decades of doing this, you have to have had some really special moments. Well, Wendy, yes. And I think uh, they keep happening to me, these amazing uh, miracles. And and I just want to say that a miracle is really just the natural order of things when you exist at a higher level of consciousness. They just happen. So they are the natural order of things at a higher consciousness. And I would like to think that I have worked my life to get myself to operate on a higher consciousness where uh, there is no blame. There is no negativity out to people. There is only a, a choice and a wish and hopefully followed by action to be positive and supportive. So when we had the Thomas fire come to Ventura, it leveled my entire neighborhood, everything but my house and the fire stopped at the fairy garden. So it ravaged three levels of citrus trees and, and, uh, and, and fruit trees, but it stopped right at the fairy garden. And then the room where I have all of my crystals that are dedicated to healing and dedicated to positive work, um, it, it was smoky in there, but we got lucky, if you want to use the word lucky, that a fire department uh, engine from Long Beach drove all the way up here and put the fire out from the neighbor's house that burned to the ground right above us. And then all the houses across the street burned to the ground and all the houses down the hill burned to the ground. So when you have your house standing there in the midst of all of these embers, it's like, okay, uh, you didn't have to be the phoenix this time. You didn't have to ar- ar- rise out of the ashes, thank God. And But you did have a little peripheral damage, which was easily fixed. That was a miracle. Yeah. And I have little forest creatures in the place where I used to live up in Cambria that would come and visit. And they were... They were spirits. They were they were angels. They were spirit guides. They were animal guides. They had something to teach, and they were a, 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 an interaction. I mean, the squirrel, my famous Helen Keller squirrel, yeah. who was blind in one eye, uh, came to say goodbye before she knew it was her last moment on Earth. It was just it's been, it's been remarkable. So I like to live my life at that high level of magic, which is just the natural order of things when you choose to live at a higher vibrational level. And I can watch things happen in my everyday life that are these little series of miracles. And uh, it's, it's wonderful. It's a wonderful way to live. 
I think some of it is so uh, natural to you that you might take it for granted. I'd love it if you would put some of those into a book too, because it, like you said, it just, this just happens and it's around you all the time. And that house is, uh, that's an incredible story because looking at the devastation from the hurricanes and the one house, I think in Galveston, there was one house that w- was standing and the entire beach was pretty much flattened. And so that's like your story with your house. It doesn't make any sense, but it says there's something there that gave you basically protection of some kind for that space. And it didn't have to be all about you, but it was about that space and what had been created in that space. It said, this is a blessing and here it is. Yeah. And we go back to this practice is egoless. It is not about me. I just rely on the power that was installed within me in the factory. And I just give it direction. I focus it and I tell it what I want it to manifest. Now, my intentions are good, you know, to, they're proactive. They're for the good of the people around me, the good of the planet. And I will continue to do that as long as I am given the gift of life. That's just the difference is that, you know, my ego is not in this. My name doesn't have to be anywhere in life. This is just how I choose to live. And as a result, this is what manifests. I think that's what you tried to spell out in the book with doing the spells, because the first thing when somebody hears about doing a spell is you're going to question, I'm doing a spell. There's good spells, there's bad spells. What's the point? And is there harm in this because I'm manipulating or asking for a favor or in some way might be interfering with someone else's life. And the way you word this, the language isn't about manipulation for someone else. It's about incorporating how can this improve or upgrade or benefit. And I think that that must have taken a little more time to focus on that too. Well, and that's the purpose I wrote this, because there are a lot of people interested in witchcraft, a lot of people interested in uh, living close to nature, using the the, the Celtic wheel of life, uh, observing different natural times of the year that are maybe work with our calendar and maybe work with the ancient calendar. A lot of people going back to that. But what I find is they get confused and they get bogged down in trying to control and trying to master, as you said, someone else's life or the outcome. And I just want to go back to the fact that we take this energy, we focus it, we give it direction, we activate it, and then we let it go because we, the universe is going to know the best possible outcome for everybody, for you, for me, for the person I'm working with. And That's the answer is that we don't try to make things happen like we don't try to end the war, even though it is horrible and people are suffering. We have to pray for the greatest and highest good outcome for all the people. That's where we work our magic is by giving that energy to that area that the highest good is served. Now that might sound a little callous to a lot of people, but we do have, and we do see a lot of people measuring up and helping and sending in aid. And that's our job. That's exactly what we're supposed to do. But at the highest level, we want the best outcome for everybody, whatever that may be. And that's the hard part. Because if we want a car and we're focusing on that and we say, I want a yellow Volkswagen that's two years old, and maybe we get a red Jeep. And now we're disappointed because we didn't get the car we wanted. We'll see, that's the universe. That's this power saying, no, I'm going to give you what you really want, which is transportation. (laughs) So when we have... We have to get all of our likes and dislikes out of there. And, you know, it's you don't say, I want to go to the prom with Johnny and he brings me an orchid. Uh, no, you want to say, I want to go to the dance with the best possible person for me. And then let the universe decide and be okay with that because it's not the end of the world. And what if you get the perfect person in your mind as a surprise, or maybe you get somebody who needs to go to the dance too, and you're serving their purpose. So if if we get our little sticky mitts out of that, and we just allow the, the energetic world to work with us and around us and know that the outcome is for the highest possible good, 
that's how we live in this, this, this genre, this level, where miracles happen as a natural course of the day. The Rainbow Witch, using your magic for good. Cac Young, a quick break. CacYoung.com is the website, Becoming a Rainbow Witch. The one thing about this book, there's a lot of information to take in, and that's why it might be six months or more if you're going to go through the entire spectrum of the colors. With that said, you also said don't rush. Don't rush. Yeah, because in any kind of transformation, you want to take the time uh, to let your body, mind, and soul catch up. Because body, mind, and soul, each one of them operates at a, on a different time frame. Um, our soul operates on an everlasting time frame. It's always been and always will be. Our body has some, some limits to it. You know, our, our organs aren't going to last 500 years, at least not right now. So we have to let everything have its own timing and catch up at its own speed. So maybe work the red ray and then leave it alone, let it settle, and then move on to the orange. But be gentle with yourself in this process because it is highly transformative. Now, something really interesting happened yesterday. I did an interview, an interview and someone said, do you know that the perfection, according to Tibetan Buddhism, is the rainbow body. When you reach the top of the ladder in the rainbow body, you have achieved Buddhahood. Now, I did not know this. So I, I, uh, I researched it yesterday and I said, well, isn't that interesting? They've been using it a lot longer than I have, but it's the achievement of the Buddha hood through a purification process. And it just happens to work not exactly with color, but certainly honoring the chakras as you, as you raise up because each of the chakras, each color has a vibration and a wavelength that is unique to that particular hue or that color. So that's very interesting. This goes back way, way, way beyond, uh, beyond my time, certainly 5,000 years. And so I thought, well, okay, maybe there's something to this, but this idea came to me out of the collective unconscious. And I just began to work with it and say, well, that's, that's an interesting thing. It's not, um, it's not about rights. It's not about personal privilege. It's not about any of that. It's about really achieving the best you can be of what you were given and who you are. And this can work for anybody in any state of life. If you want to see something really interesting, check out the videos on the monks who have been practicing that rainbow body. That is, it's a very real ritual lifestyle way of being. And they eventually, as they transcend, they do it in a way that you can see the result. It isn't just uh, an, an internal, it, it is internal and external, and it shows results from doing that. It's it's very powerful. I was amazed. I will definitely look at that. And I, I'm just kind of like, how did I miss this? But it, now's the time for me to know this. Now's the time for me to become aware of this. And I'm, you know, it's true. I might have stopped and said, oh, well, it's already out there. Uh, people are already using it. You know, this is not a novel idea. That might have crimped my uh, creative expression. But now that I find it out later, I laugh because it's like, okay, good. So yeah. some ancient yeah. knowledge is coming through me now for a reason. So, okay, I get to be that spokesperson. Well, and it's a different way because when they're talking, this is isolation. This is where they completely withdraw from anything that puts them in a, a social environment. Though, no, this is a very s serious, dedicated, isolated, and singular process where, no, this isn't what you're doing allows people to, to still be involved in society and with their communities and with, you know, with, with people in general, with the planet, that it's a completely, uh, it's an extreme version of, of faith, of prayer, of devotion. And there's definitely a place for that, but it could never work for me because I like to dance. So I think that <laughs> yeah. I think we have to, yeah. you know, have merriment and joy, yeah. and uh, you know, and so we immerse ourselves in this process in order to come out on the other side a better us, a better a better human, a better uh, a, a processed person that has total control of their own innate powers. And 
how better is that? I mean, it's kind of like AI because, first of all, we had computers and we had all these uh, applications and things that we could tap into. That's what we tap into with our chakras is our applications that came with our model. But now we've got AI and that is taking all of those dits and dots to a completely different level. And we want to stay in the driver's seat. We want to guide our own carriage as we go through life. So I think this allows us to do that and avoid be becoming a sheep, becoming a lemming, fo- following someone else just because it's a cool thing to do. No, no, no. You are the leader of your own life. You are you are the spokesperson for your own soul. So grab that power and take your luminous and enchanting presence wherever you go and a illuminate the world around you. Hey, why not? You talk about witches when they do these practices and there, I had no idea that there were so many, you named different types of witches, the type, you know, like the left-handed, witch. there's, there's several. And I'm like, well, okay, wow. But they are connected once they start doing these rituals, these routines, these, once the pattern has started, then there's a a community and they are connected. And so I think as as you do at the end of the book, when you say this isn't just a singular effort, this is me and all of my crew, my people, my support system, the people I value who have helped contribute to this and help push me on the path and help me you know find my way and affirm that I was on a way that worked for me I th- I'm just condensing consolidating that in in the the last where you say if it weren't for all of that I might be just a dreamer and not a doer yes yes <laughs> yes Yeah, and it's the people around you that may look at you askance and then go, but wait a minute, there's some, there's some value to what you're saying. And then when you were persistent in your own life, you know, in traveling around the world and, and learning different disciplines and learning different routines that people practice in order to better themselves, I would come back with these amazing stories. And uh, literally, I would have my friends over to my living room and serve them lunch and then tell them about my story. And everyone, some of them recorded it and still listened to the various different things I did, like my trip to India when I went to Puttaparthi to meet Sai Baba. Um, so it, it's really just been fun because they've been the ones that have encouraged my own personal growth and they've benefited from it. Plus, they buy my books and have me sign them. So, <laughs> so it's very sweet. Well, the, very sweet. The thing about you, that, that you're, you're a seeker and you are engaged and you are constantly pursuing something new and unique and that it takes involvement it takes it takes curiosity it takes energy but it also takes the willingness to say i don't know i want to learn and that's huge yeah and i think uh, I was, you know, given the gift of having a beginner's mind. So everything that I look at, I try to look at um, new as if I've never seen it before or never heard it before. And that keeps me from being bored and being cynical. And uh, I worked in show business for 35 years. And you, there's some people can be a cynical. It's like, you know, critics uh, are people who don't do, but they just talk about what other people do. And to some degree, that that's correct, but when you do the do and you, you stand out there in the middle of risk every single day with your creative ideas and with the product you put out, yeah, people are going to bring it down and criticize it. I remember uh, taking an elevator in a in a office building one time with um, Burt Reynolds, and Burt was at the top of his stardom at the time and he was he was very sweet hello how are you and um then he said you know it's really interesting but the minute you get to the top people try and peck at you to bring you down and he, apparently he'd just been to some kind of a meeting where somebody had sued him or something you know but it was like yeah that's pretty sad and, and that's kind of true how that world works in politics and in show business everybody likes to see you make it to the top and then when you get there it's like all right now let's see how we can bring you down and that's not what i want to do in life i want everybody to bring themselves up to their highest level and to take their friends and their family and other people with them why not everybody soar then we all have nests that are high and we can look down and have a better view what I want to do, too, is go back and mention the witches again. Do you have a ceremonial witch dedicated to ceremonies and rituals, calling on specific beings? 
There's a shamanic witch uses a power of other side along with the magic and medicines of plants and animals. The hedge witch, that's a witch who jumps the hedge, meaning moves easily between the earth and astral planes. I kind of like the swamp witch, the one who has disdain for social norms, prefers mud cake shoes, rejects the repression of materialist society, and delves deeply into the darker, whoops, darker secrets of nature. Okay, nature. All right, there we're good. In the swamp. <laughs> yes. I yes, like that yes. one. <laughs> yes, it, it's a swap which well, and too, and when it means darker nature, it means you know what is on the other side. Let's flip it over and take a look at it. It it means deeper. It doesn't mean negative. It mm-hmm. just means light and dark. Okay, so for an example, with the dragon that I was that I referred to earlier, the woman was working with dragon energy, and she put herself out in an isolated space along a roaring river, and and said it was absolutely mind boggling because she was in a in a dream plane, huge, dark, nothing, void, and frightened out of her wits because the dragon had introduced her to things that she had not even fathomed. And so she woke up with uh, just frightened. And then the next engagement with the dragon wasn't about the dark or that void space, but it wasn't necessarily negative. It was helping her identify her fear. And that was what it was about was, okay, did anything bad happen? No, it was what she had in her mind that she wasn't able to process because it was completely foreign that frightened her. And the dragon was there by her side. So I think, you know, some of this stuff is about what we do with our mind as we work these processes, working through each of those rays as you continue to elevate and ascend and expand and grow. And this is, I think, a really wonderful routine. Well, yes, and that's exactly it. How do we grow? By looking at something new, by taking in something new, and then that takes us up another level, another step. And it's about climbing the ladder of consciousness. It's about climbing the ladder of self-perfection. And that doesn't mean, you know, that you are, you know, Miss or Mr. Perfect. You are just a, a person who is content within your own being that you are congruent in your thoughts and in your feelings and in your actions. And that's where we want to get to. So that everything you think, say, and do is connected to your roots of who you really are. I want to go back to one of the miracles we talked about before. And this is with your Qigong. You had a heart issue, a health issue. And the the recovery that you did was pretty amazing. Well, yes. And thanks for bringing that up. I, I had a genetic problem with my heart. And uh, my father had heart disease and my mother did too. And so I inherited that. And in uh, 2014, I had shortness of breath. So I went into the emergency room and I met this wonderful doctor, Dr. Lopez, who became my cardiac surgeon. And he put me the next day into the cath lab and they were going to uh, run the little camera up there and put a stent or do something. And they found that there was an artery that was completely uh, uh, blocked and it had uh, torn away from my heart. It was just like kind of flapping in the wind. So they immediately did a triple bypass. So I went in for what I thought was overnight and stayed six nights at, you know, as a guest of the hospital. And so then I went home and the recovery from that kind of surgery is fairly hideous because you've been sawed in half and you've been opened up and you've been put back together. So I decided, okay, if I have kind of like the genetic dice uh, rolling against me, then let me figure out a way to... Uh, make my body stronger and better, and perhaps this won't happen again. That's where I started. So I took all my old recipes, and I added healthier uh, uh, ingredients to it, and I changed up the cheese to soy cheese and and, uh, nut cheese, and I, I took all the saturated fats out of my diet and all of the bad oils and all of the things that can affect you, and I reduced the salt and I reduced the sugar, and I made everything a lot healthier without having to eat cardboard with marinara sauce on it. So I 
uh, I redid and I published a cookbook called Heart Easy, and I changed my life because when I went back in in 2018 for the same symptoms, I said, I don't know why this is happening. So my doctor ran some cameras up there, and then he called in. He called in like an audience, and I'm sort of in in twilight at this time, so I'm 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 participating, and so he said. Your artery has completely healed. It has reattached itself to your heart, and all those little arteries and veins that we had uh, installed on the side, the three of them, to bring blood to your heart, they're not needed. They're they're hanging there like little noodles. Your (laughs) original artery healed itself, cleaned itself up, and it's functioning just fine. So what I'm going to do is just get out of there and let it be. Well, we all had a really good laugh over that because it happened and I have the befores and the afters and he said you know I'm going to bring this up at my cardiology convention because this is extraordinary I've never had a patient that's ever done this before this is this is amazing so I gave him my cookbook and I I told him my process and he just said I mean this is amazing so that's that's what the miracle was then with my health and uh uh, I've had other things that have manifested as healing tools as well. But again, it's because I put the effort in and I don't eat uh, things that would impede the functioning of my heart. Well, see, I think that also speaks to when you're using this particular process, that it's a holistic process. This isn't just one level that you're you're activating. This is going through the entire body mind, spirit, and basically upgrading your current situation, whatever it is, whatever your status is, and going through this process of working with the race. But what you in your own life demonstrate is the willingness to apply this to your situation and really fine tune it to work for you. And that's what these spells with this this whole technique can offer somebody. I'm just saying because you've experienced change and especially, you know, dramatic change and miracles in your life. I think what you're putting out is a way for other people to access that kind of result. Exactly, Wendy. And exactly. And it's not about what we like, what we dislike, what it's not about our personal taste. Um, You know, I mean, I would eat chocolate all day long if I could, but that's not how is good for my heart or my body. So just because I like something doesn't mean it's good. So I make decisions from what's the highest good, what's the highest purpose, what will serve me, my body, my soul, my life the best. Now, I could have been dead years ago if I would have continued the way I was uh, eating and, and functioning, and I had to really refine that in order to focus my life and direct it in a way that I want it to be longer than it could have been had I stayed in my old ways. And that's what I'm saying. We just harness the power that's already there and make it work for us by making our decisions from a place that isn't about um, our own preferences. I mean, who cares whether you like chocolate or peanut butter or coconut? Who cares? Make the choice that's higher. What's going to be the best for my body, for my mind, for my soul? What's the best? Uh, Is sitting around drinking with a bunch of pals every Friday night and eating greasy chips, is that going to further my life? Is that going to make me more potent and powerful in my career or in my life itself? Or if I do something else, if I choose something different uh, to expand my life, to maybe I should go dancing. Maybe I should go, you know, learn a new craft. Maybe I should take a foreign language. Maybe I should do something else with that time that is going to expand as opposed to indulge my own proclivities. And that's where I say we have the power and all we, and it's already there. All we have to do is kind of dig deep, deep and just let it out. And then boy, it comes out like a jack in the box. We there. Oh boy. And then you see the changes right away. That's what's fun about the rainbow witch and the processes. You start with the red ray and you move all the way up and you see change right away. You feel it, you get it. And that because it's got to, I mean, if we did all this stuff and then nothing happened, it'd be like, okay, what did I do that for? But no, you feel and see the changes right away. And that's what motivates you to work all seven colors. And then you're on the rainbow. You're on that thing that connects 
this earthly plane with the cosmos. And now you're, you're one of the leaders. You're the 1%. You're in the 1% of not just the economic thing, but of the people that are in charge of their lives and that are changing the lives of others for the good. And it all goes back to Liati and Jiwad. Love is all there is, and good is all we do. I'm going to give you one last little perk here, a, a compliment from one of the reviews on Amazon. There's already two. And the Rainbow Witch offers a holistic approach to color magic that transcends traditional boundaries by exploring archetypes, divine energy, astrology, chakras, feng shui principles. Readers are encouraged to delve into the esoteric meanings of each color, unlocking the hidden potential, integrating it into various aspects of their spiritual and mundane lives, whether invoking the fire energy of the red for passion or vitality of harnessing the tranquil, tranquil aura of blue for communication and healing. The book provides a comprehensive overview of the multifaceted nature of color magic. That's just a little excerpt, okay? But these are positive reviews that pretty much encompass everything that you're doing, and they get it. And they get it. And the book's only been out for a week. So, yes, yeah. I'm excited. <laughs> I'm excited for all the people who are going to open it and go, oh, my gosh, I've been waiting for this. Uh, I love it. I understand it. I can do this. That's all I want it to do. Well, congratulations. And I know your life is full because you are like a lifelong learner. And there's probably something already on your plate you haven't touched yet. One more thing about your cats. About my cat spirit? Yes. Yes. Well, oh, your, your, your house. God. Yes. Your house cats. Yes. Yeah, spirit the cat is amazing. He's, as you know, he's written his own book, uh, his first autobiography. And he just this weekend got in a little bit of trouble because his sister, Marigold Marlene, wrote a podcast. And the podcast told about this new little scratcher couch that they had been given uh, for Easter by their mombly, that's me, Mm -hmm. and Spirit, instead of laying on it and scratching on it, he ate it. So he ate the whole top part of the couch, and Marigold Marlene knew that he was going to have some consequences. So today is the day that we're going to have a little lesson in learning about what toys are for and what scratchers are for and how we know the difference. Good luck. (laughs) <laughs> i'm like exactly okay been there uh uh-huh. still working on it still don't know and <laughs> but well it's a good thing i believe that life is a process and so yes, we'll probably yeah. go down there and he'll look at me and say <laughs> it's my toy you gave it to me release it yeah that's and right i will and then yeah it was yeah. a it was a gift it was a gift. You have no right to tell me what to do with it. Uh-huh. So yeah. he's my teacher too. Yeah. Yes, my little spirit, the cat. I have a dog who's had multiple gifts. The gifts keep coming. <laughs> the dog keeps yeah. saying, let go. It's my toy. Let go. <laughs> yes, I know. So. I know it. You have a wonderful energy, and I know you know that enthusiasm is contagious, and it translates to the information in your book. There's so much to work with that that once you, you know, if you have any abilities you're already working with, this kind of is a compilation that helps incorporate that into a more refined process of working through divination and manifestation, and in some way or shape or form elevating your entire environment and everybody else who's around you. So that's a really cool thing to offer. Thank you, Wendy. And we're going to turn it into courses and lessons online that will be affordable for everybody. That's what I'm going to do this summer is make uh, make make this. I, I own the rainbowwitch.com domain. So that's going to be full of lessons and tips and all kinds of things as soon as I and my videographer can get our schedules together and we'll tape some things. So a lot of the things will be free and complimentary to people. And then they can also take the courses through me again at a nominal fee because all I want to do is people to know their own luminous and enchanting presence and expose it to the world. And website for right now, did they just reach you at your website? Yeah, they can reach me at cacyoung.com. That's spelled K-A-C, Kitchen Apple Charlie, cacyoung.com. And uh, there'll, there'll be a little bit there about the book and, you know, a coming soon of what we're going to have by the fall. Okay. Okay. Well, well, then we'll be keeping tabs. Thank you, Wendy. You're the best. I always love being on your show, and you are just a doll to have me. Thank you so much. Using your magic for good. The positive side of witchcraft. Website, kakyung.com. Energy flows where our attention goes, where we put it. 
So with these rituals, we make sure that our energy is going in the direction that we want it to so that we can manifest the things that we desire. Links are in the description for the show. Thanks for listening.